We are at Wonderland Miami with Olivia Maddox from Felicity Pharma. Really excited to have you here. Thanks so much for having me today. Yeah, no problem. Um, I'm really excited to kind of get into the background of how you ended up within this space. I know that Felicity Pharma is really uh, the first women-run biotech company, fully woman-run, yeah. which is just super impressive and really exciting stuff. So if you could kind of outline your journey. Sure. Yeah, Thank that'd you. be great. So I started the first ever cannabis marketing agency, Cannabrand, in 2013 before adult use went legal. Um, I was very passionate about helping patients, helping people, helping the industry as a whole. Um, at that time, it was very taboo. It was, uh, I remember telling my friends and family, you know, that I was getting into the space and some of them told me I would never be able to get a real job ever again. Um, and this was back when there really wasn't any branding or marketing around cannabis. So my mission has been to destigmatize plant medicine as well as the psychedelic space. Um, in 2020, I started an offshoot called Psilocybin brand that focuses on psychedelic medicine, life sciences, and biotech as well. And that brought me to Felicity Pharma. So I'm the CEO and founder. We are a drug development company that's focused on women's needs. So specifically mood disorders and chronic pain. Um, we're working with several different candidates, uh, psilocybin, MDMA, and we're, we're creating drugs that are going to be uh, just groundbreaking for, for in, and disruptive for the antidepressant in the opiate market. So mm -hmm. we're really excited to be doing this. That's super exciting. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting that you're kind of outlining um, that this is more like women specific and targeted for that demographic. Yes. So how would you say that those ailments are different than um, maybe just the general population? Why do we have to focus on women's needs within this area? Sure. So there has actually been little to no innovation in women's health products in the past 30 years. Women have almost been seen and are still seen as a minority in the world. Mm -hmm. So there's little to no innovation there. Um, also, when it comes to clinical trials and creating products on the market, women have lots of variables with um, their, their menstrual cycles and their, and their life bearing age. So it's difficult to create uh, uh, trials that have the same types of um, data points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is your company kind of working around um, those specific issues that women have and cultivating the drugs around that? Correct. So okay. right now we're looking at chronic pain. Um, we found that psychedelics and literature suggests that psychedelics uh, can rewire your brain and that's called neurogenesis, neuroplasticity. So when you're a young child, you, your, your, your brain is very neuro, neuroplastic. Mm -hmm. So it um, can change in form. And by using psychedelic medicine, we can actually re-stimulate and reform the brain and, and how the neurons interact. So basically, these, these new medicines are disrupting the, the, the pain uh, market, really. Um, also, on the mood disorder side, the psychedelics are really helping with just uplifting moods. Right now, there's just SSRIs on the market. Mm -hmm. um, they're over over uh, prescribed, and they are. It, there's not a lot of options for mood disorders. There is one approved drug on the market called Zolresso. Mm -hmm. um, it is an IV that you have to take at the hospital for 36 hours for PMDD. Um, so just, that just gives a great example of how there's a lack of products on the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So did your work in cannabis uh, also kind of center around women's issues? And so you have that kind of background maybe interest that has kind of led into the psychedelic space? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm all about women empowerment and cool. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's really cool to see the paradigm shift of you know, women CEOs in the psychedelic space and the cannabis space and, and being in more um, decision making, C-level founding positions. Um, also, you know, I'm a woman, so it's so important to uh, lift other women up and, and really help them. And again, this is a huge opportunity because there really are not that many products on the market besides, you know, your birth controls and things like that mm -hmm. to help with women's needs. Um, 
there's so much opportunity and then just going back to um, neurogenesis and chronic pain and, and, and such, there, there are ways that the psychedelic space help women specifically with um, pain such as like vulvodynia, for instance, is a chronic pain of the vaginal area and just it's, it's horrible and there's really no solutions for these things. Mm -hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, do you have any information on how women are kind of intaking um, the research and the data about psychedelic wellness and healing? Is there kind of a way that uh, that messaging is getting across to them effectively? Yeah, and that's a great question. So since I do have a media and marketing background, that's something that we're going to be working on, which is you know gathering data, working with some of the, the tech companies and the apps that are in the space, aggregating data. Um, but we're really going to be getting most of our data through the clinical trials we're going to be conducting. Mm -hmm. So we'll have facts. We'll be able to go, you know, get FDA approved, go to market. Um, so we're really excited to, to not only you know take the scientific medicine drug approach, but also. Um, just spread awareness of the psychedelic community, um, of the benefits of psychedelics as well, mm -hmm. and just really open a lot of people's minds. That's great. Yeah. I think something that we're finding just on our platform is that the interest in psychedelic healing uh, between men and women is almost equal, uh, which is really interesting to see, I think, because I don't think that there have been a lot of women figures in this space to push this cause through. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there is a lot of potential here. Um, you know, women are really struggling with their own health issues that are very women specific so it's exciting to kind of see you understanding that issue and finding a solution to that Absolutely. you know yes yeah. that's really exciting thank you so much yeah no problem yeah. um yeah so where are you hoping to see the direction of felicity pharma to go you know in the coming years Sure, so right now we're going straight to clinic mm -hmm. and, that, and we're also patenting a couple different use patents for some of our candidates and novel compounds we're creating um, and we're looking to potentially go public the next two years and partner with companies as well. Um, I think collaboration is, is major, I think <laughs> having allies is major. Mm -hmm. and. Um, just, I can't wait to see a, a an approved drug on the market that is a psychedelic-backed medicine. So we're really excited. That's really exciting. Yeah. Um, are you in kind of maybe discussion and um, in collaboration with Mind Cure at all, uh, with kind of what they're focusing on with um, women, kind of like sexual uh, issues in that area? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kelsey Ramson yeah. is phenomenal. She's a great friend, and you know I really respect what she and the Mind Cure team are doing and. We've been chatting, chatting here and there, and hopefully we'll work on something together at some point. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's great. It's awesome yeah. to be able to kind of like have allies within the industry that are like-minded, especially within, um, I mean, technically a minority group in the industry, which is women, right? Yes. Um, but that's changing, and I see right. that you know there's a lot of potential for that growth to happen here, and I think that we're you're kind of like spearheading that. Um, yeah. So we appreciate all the work you're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem.